first of all, I want to thank you for your patience. I know you had a, yes, good afternoon. <laughs> I know you had a long wait, and I'm very grateful that you stayed. Um, our first speaker, our first presenter for the afternoon is Honorable Philip J. Pierre, Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Development, and the Youth Economy, and Minister for Justice and National Security. Um, this morning, Prime Minister will deliver a statement on proposed changes to the CIP program. So he will deliver the statement, and if you have any questions, we will take them afterwards, but let's do so in an orderly manner. Let's maintain order. Okay? Prime Minister. Ladies, um, good afternoon, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let me read, I'll read a statement on the St. Lucia proposed changes to our CIP program. After careful review and extensive discussions with stakeholders and other OECS heads of government with CIP programs, the government of St. Lucia announces that it has decided to sign the Memorandum of Agreement, MOE, already signed by other OECS CIP countries. The memorandum calls for common standards and procedures in the following areas. Pricing, information sharing and transparency standards, regulation, security screening and framework, regulation of agents, marketing and promotion of programs, joint training and capacity building, dispute resolution, amendment and termination. In addition to signing this memorandum, St. Lucia has made further suggestions to strengthen this regional agreement, including proposing legislative changes to address change of name requests. This has been agreed to by other heads of government. After consultations are completed with regional governments and other partners, the government of St. Lucia will suggest further strengthening of the CIP program. This would include an annual quota, a net worth for applicants, escrow accounts to be held in St. Lucia or in individual islands, a requirement that only licensed promoters will be allowed to submit applicants to local authorized agents, and those promoters will have to submit a due diligence report on each applicant. Over the last year, the Citizenship by Investment Unit in St. Lucia has instituted all six principles agreed to with the United States government. From February 15, 2023, a ban on applicants from Russia and Belarusians. From September 4, 2023, implemented applicant interviews. From September 4, 2023, vetting of all applicants through the local financial intelligence authority. From January 2020, sharing of denials with the Joint Regional Communication Center, JRCC. An operational review of the program by international consultancy firm will commence shortly. The St. Lucia CIP unit will seek international support with the recovery of revoked passports. Additionally, the St. Lucia CIP unit publishes an annual report that is tabled in Parliament which includes financial statements. Furthermore, the free structure for different options are published in the official gazette. The government of St. Lucia remains committed to maintaining and reinforcing the integrity of its CIP program with a transparent and accountable process that delivers tangible benefits to all St. Lucians. Thank you. Just before you open, I open the floor for questions, I want to remind you that what St. Lucia is proposing is what St. Lucia had before that was reversed by the last government. The, the, the three things being an annual quota, a net worth for applicants, and escrow cons to be held in St. Lucia. St. Lucia already had established that, and it was reversed, reversed by the last government. So we are saying that we are, we are saying that we should, bring, we are advising our other governments to bring it back 
So basically, go back where we started, because that, that is where we started. We said it would be 500 applicants, the fee would have been $200,000, and then each applicant should have had a net worth. So we say, let's go back there, because we were there, and we were taken back by the last government. Can you get questions? <clears throat> Um, so when you said that they reversed the process, so did the did the other islands were they aware of the original and did the islands consent to join? No, at that time there was no agreement. At that time everybody did their own thing. Okay, so the so the joint agreement is something that came out lately. The MOU just came out recently, I think earlier this year, January. And and and, and by the way, by the way. There's always been talk of joint action by the OECS countries. And I'd like you, I want to say myself, to do your research to find out which island vehemently opposed it. I'll let you find for yourself. Which, which island vehemently opposed a joint approach? And the records are available. Which island? I, I want to <coughs> clarify something for me. It, it seems that you might be saying that we are returning to a standard that St. Lucia once held, and that this standard that St. Lucia once held is going to be the sub-regional standard. This is a standard we are going to recommend to be the sub-regional standard. Okay, so that everyone else will be coming to our standard. We're going to be recommending it, yes. Where, where we were in 2015. Okay, and this, the, the, because everybody was doing their own thing, people were not holding those standards you are now recommending. Everybody, including St. Lucia, we changed. Will this standard be... Uh, be but if you read properly, high, could it be seen as a higher standard than what pertained in other islands before? If you look at carefully, you, we say to you, when consultations are completed with regional governments, St. Lucia will suggest strengthening the CIP program to bring it back to the standards where we were in 2015. Because when we started in 2015, these were the standards we had. Is that not an uncompetitive standard, and isn't that why? We are all in the situation we're in now because well, we lowered the standards to be more competitive. Well, well at that happen? point, at that point, the country who reversed that was their position. The countries who did not. The country who did not. The country. The country. That came, that came away from this is Saint Lucia. Mm -hmm. Saint Lucia came away from that standard. That's that's what my research is telling me. That's what it did, <laughs> and at the same time, when Saint Lucia brought in. The Galaxy Hotel Investment at the same time. Um, good morning. What has, afternoon, sorry. What has changed now versus, let's say, last week when St. Lucia. Nothing has changed. If you follow carefully, St. Lucia has always said that we had contractual obligations that we had to discuss with. We always said so. And you know, I just want to repeat. I just want to repeat. St. Lucia was never against the MOA. Never. We never there's no record that will say that St. Lucia ever opposed the MOA. You can't find a record. You can find speculation, not, not a record. What the Prime Minister St. Lucia always said. And what the government spokesman for St. Lucia said was we have some contractual obligations that we have to sort out. And as soon as we sorted them out, St. because St. Lucia was involved in all the discussions. I don't want to give you the impression St. Lucia was rowing away. St. Lucia was not rowing. St. Lucia always made the point that as soon as these contractual obligations are completed, we would have signed the MOA. We were involved in all, in all these discussions. And I'll tell you what, these discussions went back as far as 2016, when one country vehemently opposed it. So we're, not, so we're not reinventing the wheel here. What we're seeing is that we've now we've discussed these discussions, we've been, we've been holding them with, our, with current prime ministers, prime minister of St. Kitts, prime minister of Grenada, prime, prime minister of... Dominican Prime Minister of St. Lucia. We've been in constant dialogue. Because we knew, we know that the better way to go would have been to unite our programs. 
and there's going to be more work. More work is being done to ensuring that our programs are standardized. So we never gain any MOA. We never gain the highest levels of transparency and accountability in our programs. We've never been against that. Never. Nor has there been any situation where our due diligence has been called into this into disrepute. So what we're doing now is we've, we've done our contractual obligations, our contractual discussions on these obligations, and we go in front and say, listen, what we always said, now we're ready. <clears throat> on the lighter side, this morning I passed in Castries, and I realized the booths are still closed and persons are still selling on the outside. Um, Mr. Sasso, what was said on Friday, um, Friday was the last time where persons allowed it to sell on the outside, but it's, it's the same. What say you on well, that? I'll have to we'll get the Minister of Local Government. I will have to ask him why that's happening. Yeah. Well, um, on this issue also, some, have heard, some people say that this, they haven't gotten the keys. As a major local government. Yes. You attended the SEEDS conference in Antigua, correct? Um, I was at the conference. I went to a meeting okay. during the SEEDS conference. Okay. I went to the SEEDS conference for one singular purpose, okay. which I handled and I came back. Okay, I understand. All right? <laughs> um, Friday was the, um, the handover of the vehicles to the police. Um, on a prior occasion, some police officials would have said that uh, your administration, or simply administrations in general, were only replacing the vehicles that the police that the police force would have decommissioned, and that the the investment into the fleet wasn't substantial. A ballpark figure of vehicles number of vehicles that would have been substantial was about 70. That was the, the figure that was given. How was that figure calculated? I, I cannot Well, the person give it, you must ask them. Well, I'm asking you something different now. Please. <laughs> How, what is the plan? Let's, okay, this is June. We have the rest of the year and then the end of the financial year. What other investments can let you me, see going into the let me say, let me say Let me say something to you. A replacement, new, whatever you want. There's never been a time in St. Lucia's history when the police have had so many resources. Never. The last time was in 2006, during World Cup cricket. That's the last time. Fact. Number two. Even if you use the term replacement, which is a term that, that, that has been used by certain people you, you haven't heard these things from any official sources. You have from certain people who, whose, whose motives are, are, are well known. Right? Even his replacement, let's say his replacement, it, they are more than the police decommissioned. So this argument is futile. This argument is reeks of politics. And it just reeks of just finding something to say to, to, to make a good effort look bad. That's all. So I don't want to get involved in, in, in that discussion. It has, it has provoked insults on Facebook, but that is the nature of, 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 of the game. My purpose is to give the police the resources and it will continue to be my purpose. And I, as I said during my discussion, during my, my, my speech, the, the, the people in the traffic department wanted my resources, they will get it. Whether you call it replacement or not. They, they go, my purpose is to give the police the resources to fight crime. That is my purpose. That's my job as a Prime Minister of St. Lucia. And once we have the resources, we are going to give it to them, and you'll see many more resources being given to them as time goes on. We had discussions about the K-9. The K-9 is now in St. Lucia. So the K-9 will be nice that there is one there, some others will, will, will be coming. You've heard about the custody suites. The custody suites was demolished. And there was nowhere to carry people that were arrested. That's a fact. Whether you like it or not, that's a fact. 
It was recklessly demolished without any thought of what had happened after it had been demolished. Why, why are we discussing replacement vehicles when you have no place to put cruisers when you arrest them? These are facts. And any, any conscious policeman tell you, will tell you that is a fact. And we're running away from it. We are running away from the fact that suspects had to be released because there was nowhere to put them. Because there was a facility that was demolished. We are running away from, from, from the fact that the, the police in Grosley were working in subhuman conditions. And from 2016, there had been a plan to build a new police headquarters. What happened? These are facts. We were running away from the fact that the police headquarters in Viewfort started with a problem that would cost between three and five hundred thousand dollars. It was neglected. Now it's costing nearly four million dollars to complete it. These are facts. Why are we escaping it? Why are you escaping the fact that the, the Marigold police station is still in a, in, a, in, a, in a condition that needs to be repaired? But we seem to be moving from all moving from pillar to post, instead of dealing with facts that are provable. These things are not things that I'm, I'm pulling from the air. They are things that, that you can prove easily. So these are things we're doing. You're dealing with, with the position right now that hopefully at the end of, of, of the month, we'll open the custody suites where we'll be able to house people when they're arrested. Hopefully we can get it open before the carnival season. That's what we're doing. What we're doing now is that we're improving the capacity of the police force. Next week, by the third week in June, we are going to start a training program for about 17 new recruits. That's what we're doing to improve the capacity. What we're doing is that we, right now, the policemen who, run, who are running a correspondent course with the Jamaican constabulary to help them to improve their skills. That's what we're doing for, for the police force. Improving the training, improving the capacity, giving them resources, improving the housing conditions under which they, they, they live. That's what we're doing. We are, we are increasing capacity, both in terms of manpower, in terms of physical, and in terms of technological. That's what we're doing. Because I've always said, and I repeat to say, regardless of, of anything that is said, my job is to give the police resources and allow them to do their work as crime fighters. That's what we do. So this argument of replacement is futile. The fact is they didn't have, and now they have. That's what's important. Um, Mr. Prime Minister, I want to go back to the issue of CIP. Um, the new standards, okay. Reading the MSR media complaints and <coughs> some of the allegations about uh, selling um, citizenships at low cost, high volume gave me a sense of how much money is at stake here. That if, let's say we take the MS, MSR math and say that uh, 11,000, we have a backlog of 11,000 applications for um, CDI in St. Lucia, and they're being undersold at between 50 and $65,000. I don't know that. Eh? We're just doing their math. According to that math, at fifty thousand dollars, those eleven thousand passports will be worth more than half a billion dollars. Now, the the rationale behind underselling it would be that you you're selling wholesale so that you're getting more for more in a shorter period of time, even though you're giving up some income, in, some retail income, sort of. My question is, are we? It's a that's a lot of money to be given up to raise the standard? How, how, how are we recovering first of all, money? First of all, I do not think there are 11,000 passports. I don't think so. I doubt there is. Right? Secondly, the St. Lucia government, as I said in the statement, constantly publishes how, what we sell our options for. This is our official position. It's, it's in the Gazette. If you look at the Gazette of the 24th of December, and I want to talk about the Gazette because I hear people say about there is no information of this. I want to make that point. Every incentive the government gives is published in the Solution Gazette. Every incentive. 
The government doesn't 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 just give you like help you say there's no information. It's in the government gazette. Every incentive. Every duty free incentive, every incentive as far as value added tax is concerned, every incentive is published. So the cost of CIP, the CIP program in Russia, is published in the Gazette. This is the official position of, of, of the government in Russia. I cannot speak to anything that hap that's happening anywhere else. I can speak to the official position of the government. And I've made the point to you several times. The RICO investment is a private individual who's been, who, who has his complaints. It's not a governmental thing. I have said so several times, and this is something you can prove. It's a private individual. But we are treating it as if it's a government situation. It's not a government situation as yet. It's a private individual who we choose to take his word for it, some of us. So I want you to, you know, we have to divide. No, I'll tell you something. I may not point so many times before. When these things have an impact, so when we mix up the facts, the fact is, it's a private individual who has his grievances. And in that, he has accused other people and he's brought them in. There's no government. The RICO investment is not a government investment. It's not a government investigation, sorry. It's a private individual. So let us wait and see where that is, led, is, is leading. Where is this private individual with his complaints? Well, let's see what's up. But you mustn't behave as if that's a government thing. No government. Um, the, the merits or the demerits, the court will tell. But we are prejudging what the court will say. The question is, are we going to lose money over changing these standards, over these new standards? Are we going to lose money over it? Are we going to... What, what is the cost of... The cost of that over? is that... When we go to the $200,000 limit, our CIP program will be, will be increased from $100,000 to $200,000. The cost, I can't predict. The um, impact, I can't predict. The loss of market share? I can't uh, predict. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, you, you, um, <coughs> you, you highlighted the development in Dominica in St. Kitts. And do you think that with this, all this transition and all this, that St. Lucia lost out on a deal? You think that is what I don't, happened? I don't use the word deal. Or, or what I want to tell you, which is, again, a fact. Between 2016 and 2021, there was no tangible, tangible gain from the CIP program. Tangible. This my words. This my carefully. There was a hotel started in 2015. It wasn't finished. It still isn't finished. There was another hotel proposed. We ended up paying money. That hotel since then has gone to Dominica. These are facts. As to why, you must ask. You must ask the people who were there when it happened. I was not there. But I'm saying with the infrastructure program that we are negotiating, there would have been tangible benefits. You would see roads going up. You would see houses going up. You would see it. You could not see anything happen between 2015 and 2016, both before COVID and after COVID. In all other countries, there are things happened. Hotels have been built after COVID in the region. Secret hotel went up after COVID. The world stopped for a year or two. The world is stopped for five years. There has been there have been other investments. The Bahamas, GPH. These investments went up during the COVID years. So let's not start using COVID as an excuse. COVID, COVID stopped the whole world. But the world continued after COVID. The question is, what happened in St. Lucia after COVID? That's the question. Or before COVID, leaving all the COVID years. That's the question you must ask yourself. And in 2021, 20, 2021, there was COVID. There was the, the, the Delta variant. You remember the predictions that the people would have been 
would have would have been found dead outside the the, 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 the hospital because of mismanagement. Maybe you remember the, these predictions of, about the Delta variant? In 2021, there was a Delta variant, the most deadly strain of the COVID virus. It was there in 2021. So the question is, you have a period between 2016 and 2021. You have to take off the COVID years and see what happened before or what happened after. And let's go to all the other islands. You will see that this, the, the Range Hotel was built in Dominica. The Secret Hotel was built in, in, in Grenada. Don't ask for St. Kitts. So there was no tangible benefits for the people of St. Lucia from the program. You recently attended a <coughs> check handover f um, for farmers. Um, of? For farmers. Farmers. Yes. Um, first of all, tell us what that was about and also um, how does it assist with the government's goal to not just assist growers but help with food security? Okay. First of all, um, Winera is a private company. Okay? Winera is run by our board directors. No government minister has any say in banana production, etc. etc. But I mean box boxes production. You, you understand? <laughs> but for somehow, some reason bananas production schedules went bad and there was a shortage of bananas, banana boxes. So farmers lost their income. The Minister of Agriculture intervened and uh, now Look at how this government operates. And that's the difference. That's the difference. Here's what we did. We asked the Ministry of Agriculture to go into an investigation, speaking to the exporters. They are the ones who use the boxes. The exporters to find out what was the loss to the farmers. The Ministry of Agriculture, through its permanent secretary, not the cabinet, prepared a schedule of losses for exporters, people who use to box bananas to export it, bananas and plantains. I had made a statement in the, in the budget saying that the government of Lucia will make available $500,000 for these farmers who had lost income. The Ministry of Agriculture's calculation showed that we needed nearly a million dollars. That's the calculations. Now, that did not replace all the income that they lost. It's a partial loss of income. We went back to the cabinet and I got in a million dollars. So we had a million dollars. That was distributed basically on what the ministry calculated. No politician got involved in that. It wasn't done according to where you live or who you support. Every farmer, 220 something of them, that list was prepared by the Ministry of Agriculture. And you know, I want to re-emphasize re that. Because when you try to, to intermingle politics, in a situation where it was absolutely not political. There was no sort of politics in, in, in that situation. What the situation was, that banana farmers were affected and we need to relieve them. Relieve them from the issues that they were going from, that they had lost income. There was no politics. So that's, that's what happened. So that's how they, they got the million dollars. But I have good news for you. We're now going to have a crop you're going to implement a crop insurance for banana farmers. Something that we long spoke about, a crop insurance. And I've put $600,000 in the budget for that, to start moving the crop insurance. It, so hopefully, hopefully, because you know this insurance, what is that? That's a negotiation between other CARICOM countries, other um, OECS countries. A crop, because the business of, of agriculture insurance is very expensive. So you put $600,000, now, hopefully, we could get some level of insurance coverage. I don't want you to come back, come back to me and say, I said so. Because you know how it's very nice to say what I didn't say. <coughs> or try and put piece together, piece together, and make a statement and say, I said it. What I said, 
is that we've, we have, we are going to introduce crop insurance and the government has made a contribution of $600,000 premium towards that. Further, we are, we are going to see if we can get young people involved directly in agriculture through the youth economy. And there's been an investment of $800,000 in what we call in what we call agricultural technology for young people. That came out of a visit by the Minister of Agriculture to Guyana, where Guyana is doing a lot of work in agricultural diversification, in getting young people involved in agriculture. So the government has invested $800,000. And the Minister of Agriculture will make a statement very soon where we're going to get young people, young farmers, who do not want to do the traditional agriculture, will get involved in scientific agriculture. We have $800,000 involved in that. That will be worked through the youth economy. Should the crop insurance come through? Um, speak to the importance of that, because I know, particularly in our um, situation with the climate in St. Lucia, um, yeah, we have issues with that. So speak to the import importance of that. Yeah. Very important, and, very ex very ex and this is why we have to do it from a regional point of view, because one country can, not, may not be able to sustain the loss. As I have said several times before, we can get up one morning and there is no country. It's very possible one morning and a hurricane and there is no country. We said so several times before. One country may not be able to to to, to meet the premium. This is why we, we went with an OECS so we can have it together. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Prime Minister. I just want to go back to the CIP. Uh, I have two questions, and if I am permitted, while the the press secretary has asked me to make eye contact with her as to when I should stop, so I'm making that eye contact now. In, at the meeting on the weekend, in your discussions with the other leaders, and more, more specifically, uh, Prime Minister Juro of St. Kitts Nevis. The meeting was on the weekend. Huh? Was it the Friday? It wasn't the meeting, it was not. The Friday, was, Friday let's, evening? Let's, let's, let's go ahead. Okay. Sorry about getting the timeline <coughs> wrong. However, in your discussions, did you have time to discuss with Prime Minister Drew uh, his own take on how he is managing uh, the situation regarding MSR because the uh, RICO lawsuit is involving actors in St. Kitts Nevis, including in his own cabinet, and the CIP here in St. Lucia through the CEO, Mr. McLeod uh, Emmanuel? No, let, let's, let's, get, let's get the second part right. Let's talk about McLeod Emanuel. What, what, what did you say? That you said the RICO involves him. Correct, the CIP. He is the CEO of the CIP. Mm -hmm. Correct? Is that correct? Or have he he's a, resigned? He's a, CEO, he's, a CEO. he's a CEO. And did a good job, too. Good. So he's named as a co-defendant. Is that correct? Yes, you saw it like me. Okay, right. So I'm asking, Prime Minister Drew has taken the position, and it has been widely reported regionally and internationally and locally as well here, uh, that in whatever review that is done of the CIP and its operations in St. Kitts, that he is going to give due consideration to the revocation of any of the applications, or passports, rather. I think that you, should, you should get it correct, eh? correct. Now, I don't argue that if you should get it correct. Eh? I do not, I don't think Prime Minister Drew said so. I don't think he said so. I think there's a story that said that. And you must get that very correct. Because that, as I said, I don't, I don't get involved in the intelligence of St. Kitts. But I am not sure he said so. I think there's a story that went out that said he said so. But I think you should, you should, <laughs> I can't, I can't. Did you, you ask him you are, in no, your I just, conversations? No, no, I didn't ask him that, never. I didn't ask him that. So but in the interest... You're, you're an experienced journalist. You should know better than that. I will never see... You should know... When I say you should know better than that, I will not tell you what to do. But I don't think he said so. I okay, said but so. we, we can't debate that. I don't want to split hairs over that. Yes. We won't split no, I hairs. No, I did not. Question, I did not know. Okay, so we won't split hairs on that. The answer How, is I however, did not. I did not. However, in the, given that you are working towards the standardization of the, uh, CI, the CBI for the OECS. In the interest of that standardization, would you consider, give due consideration to the revocation 
of any passports <clears throat> that considering given because we've talked about the underselling, although the last time I asked you whether we had taken an independent investigation into those claims, I have not received a response from you on that. However, if it does come to be that there have been Senusian passports issued to CIP, through CIP, would you give due consideration to revocation? If I had to give any due consideration, I'd give due consideration to revocation if from 2016. Why 2016? Because 2016 is the year when, when, when the laws have changed, when the price has changed. So if, I, if, 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 if I would go back to 2016, I would not start in 2021. Because in 2016, that's when the standard was changed. But the standard being changed doesn't mean, and because certainly we've not heard a claim that the passport were being uh, illegally sold or undersold. You mean you, you did not have a claim from a private individual? So you are saying that you have official I complaints? Never said so. Don't say what I didn't say. No, I'm asking. I'm telling you that from 2016, we did not, we did not get a claim from any private individual. But in 2021, you get a claim from a private individual. That's all I'm saying. But you are confident that in 2021, you do not have I, any instances I, of underselling of our passports. I, but in 2020, matters, 2016, there was? I never said so. I said, you asked whether I would give any, whether I would give any thought to revoking passports that were undersold. I told you I haven't, but if I am, I'll do from 2016. That's all I said. I said I haven't, but if I am, I'm going to do from 2016. You ask me why, I do from 2016, that's when the price was reduced in 2016. That's all I said. But these were sanctioned reductions. I don't know what you mean of sanction. Because it was an agreed that the, government, that the government itself introduced the reduced prices. Government itself, but, but in the, this the government claim, always introduces... In this price. claim by MSR, and I think maybe sometimes it gets... A, this claim by MSR is that the agreed price, what has been set by the government in the marketplace, it is being sold below the and that set is a, And that price. is his claim, that is his claim, which is not for the law courts. How can I comment on a claim by, an individual, by a, a, a private individual? I can't comment on it. That's a claim that he's made, and it's in the law courts. Let, let, let the law courts take, take, take his run. But in our defense, Prime Minister, are we looking at the veracity let of the, the claim? Let the law courts take its course. I'll tell you okay. something. There was a claim that a, a, a certain calypso was used for, for, for purposes that were not, that were not untold for. And there's a claim for $50,000. You want me to make a, a pronouncement on that? No. I can't make a pronouncement on that because there is a claim that a Calypso was used when, he, when it should not have been used. So the person who wrote the Calypso through his lawyer made a claim, a claim for, for $50,000. So what do I do? Comment on that? I can't. Let the court comment on it. But in all due respect, Prime Minister, we're looking at the... We look. We can't compare the Saint Lucia as a nation to a calypso. No, we talk about the claim. And a, an no, we talk, no, we talk about claims. Um, we, these we talk are about claims that by, analogy. We talk about claims by private individuals. At the end of the day, it is the, you know, the, the reputation of an we, entire nation. Let's hinges. not go into the reputation business, please. Okay, fairly. Fair I I just want to I I want to just move on quickly. I I I thank you, Mr. Riani Isador. Um, if I just allow me to just move very quickly before the mic is taken away. Uh, the other issue, you spoke about the infrastructure more earlier on, the infrastructure um, component for the CIP. W what are the details pertaining to that? Do we, you have not indicated who or which is the investor uh, involved in this infrastructure? Um, have, you have you identified all of the projects that you want, or is it one? Uh, as soon as that, as soon as that uh, information is available, you get it. You get it. You get it. Why are you so? So are, no, why are you so? Are you saying that you are still negotiating <laughs> with the investor? Why are you so much in a hurry? Just relax. You're driving better roads. You know, build them at a cost. Relax. Everything will be fine.
Don't but they, how how does the market? Because I'm asking well, market, again I, because what, what, what of the, the transparency. The market is calling for better roads. The, no, no, I'm talking about the in the CBI for. market. In the CBI in market. In the CBI market, I can tell you, as in most investment, Saint Lucia is bursting in the seams. You must have heard about the Mont Piment investment. You must have heard about the investment by GBH. You must have heard about the all the, of these the, the are CIP. Tests. No, all of these are investment. Use the word investment. I was talking about in the, the CBI you market, no, the, you CBI. Said investment too. the CIP the CBI or CBI. It's like an investment too. Yes, sir. You will invest if you have confidence. Yes, sir. Yes. But there are no details on the and CIP you, website pertaining to the as infrastructure. Have, as soon as we have the details, we make it available to you. That's all I'm saying to you. Right now, it is, it is, we, are working on, we are working on the details with the contractual obligations. As soon as you're ready, you're here. Let's have a final hear. question. As usual, you're here. Final question. Uh, on the weekend, we the, the news uh, surfaced on the EU making the decision for the suspension or the, the permanent suspension of Vanuatu, the island Vanuatu, of its uh, CBI program. Uh, on the, the the they had been on suspension um, since 2022. There was an 18 month extension of that while the EU asked them to get their house in order. And now, now this has come through. And the, on, the, the, on the basis of the CBI program having this, the, introducing the real estate option and having no clear details on it and with a single master agent. I am, I'm asking that in considering what the EU uh, Parliament will soon be voting on the inclusion of the CIP or CBI as a, mediate, uh, a reason for immediate suspension uh, of CIP or CBI countries. Given that, given that you've been to the EU to tell them how great our due diligence you, and our you won't, CIP. You won't let me, you won't let me. No, but you, you reported to us that you, you told them me. how you great it was. If you were there with me, you would have said, said that. If well, you wouldn't me. Go ahead. Yes. So, given that you went and to tell them how great our due diligence, you will not dive me. So but you me. reported to us that you told them that it was fantastic. I didn't say so. I yes, said sir. I reported them that our, that our due diligence was rigorous. I never used the word fantastic. That's your word. I said okay. the due diligence was 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 rigorous, and we taken all measures and asked them for the support to improve our due diligence. That's what I said. I never said fantastic. My vocabulary is not as wide as some people. Okay, so fair enough. We won't split hairs over that either. But I didn't say that. But on on the, the question remains, given because it would seem that there was a lot of tolerance on the part of the EU. Are you concerned that even though now we have we have decided to sign on to the OECS CBI agreement, that the EU would perhaps shrug it off and say? Too little, too late. I can't predict the EU. I never will predict the EU. I can't. I will not. You did not report to us maybe some feedback from the OECS leaders on the decision by St. Lucia to finally sign. I had a meeting with them. If you, if you listen to it carefully, you'll see after, after discussions with stakeholders and other OECS heads of government, that's what's was in the first line of the, of the discussion. I'm sorry, did we agree to uniformity in the pricing? It said pricing, yes. It uniformity said, in the pricing. That's what I said. Let me read for you again. I'll give you a copy anyhow. After careful review and extensive discussions with stakeholders, you get a copy from Ms. everybody else, and other OECS as a government, if CIP programs, the government's solution announces that it has decided to sign the MOA already signed by other OECS CIP countries. Memorandum called for common standards and procedures in the following areas, and it listed. Pricing number. And did we agree which, because there are, there's still variations in the pricing. Do we have, because I know the question was asked earlier by Jason with respect to Jason Sifle, in respect to whether we are going to be losing any revenue as a result. Uh, so I know that St. Kitts is at 400, 450 in the donation aspect. 
uh, the, the others are up at 200,000. I think we're supposed to read. So, so the price you're talking about in that regard is $200,000. For the it. donation aspect. That's the price that I'm talking about in that document is $200,000. Donation? For $200,000. That's the price you're talking about in this document. Yes, sir, but we also have 200000 for real estate. So this, I'm asking if the they both are 200000 are speaking about the ceiling is two. Hundred thousand dollars. Okay, thank you. That's the ceiling. That's the price you're speaking about in this regard. I know you're Julian Alfred Pran. You must have seen her race on the hundred. Saturday, the the hundred yeah. goal in the professional career. I'm Con hopeful. Congratulations. That she will one make it to Paris. Two medal in Paris. Well, I'm I'm almost sure that she'll make it to Paris, and. Just getting to be sure that she's <laughs> made But I would really congratulate you. Really, really congratulate her. You see, I'll tell you something. There's no need for us to engender such ill will in a small country, you know. No will. No, I'll tell you something. Let me just see something here that is that I want to see. This job. Is a temporary job, very temporary. But Saint Lucia will remain. Saint Lucia is not the property of any man or woman. Saint Lucia is a property of Saint Lucians. No man or woman has any right to be prime minister of Saint Lucia. It doesn't come by right. It comes by by the people choosing you. When the people make a decision, we have to respect it, and it makes no sense. Burning the house to kill a rat. It makes no sense. I've said so, and I was in opposition. It makes no sense. And so I want to plead, use the word plead for us. Let us not burn the house to kill the rat. What we are doing here, it goes overseas. What we are saying here, it goes overseas. When we deliberately misinform, it goes overseas. It does not augur well for the country. We can, we can debate on things, but the blatant misinformation is not right. You read some things that are unbelievable. Unbelievable. So all I'm saying to you, journalists, is let us not, let us criticize, but let us not when things are deliberately false, let's not, let's not, not repeat it. I heard somebody say that GPH will sell water. I mean, how can somebody, GPH will sell electricity? How can somebody say that? That means GPH will build an electricity plant, a power plant, and sell electricity. GPH will build a water plant and sell water. I mean, how can, how can we say that? How can I mean this? It, it, it's almost, it, it, it breaks your heart. It really breaks my heart. Here we have a business that is proven. If you go to the Bahamas, you'll see what GPH did. Here you have a country that its cruise, the cruise part of its tourism is not being competitive. We tried for several years to get an investor in the cruise tourism. When I was Minister of Tourism, I went to Jamaica, to Ocho Rios, to try to get one of the, of the, the existing cruise, um, cruise suppliers to, to improve the cruise, the cruise facilities in St. Lucia. We tried. The last government tried. The last government cut a ribbon somewhere in Viewfort for some cruise and, and, and endeavor. There was a big show in Miami when they said there'd be some big crew spot development. They would move El Pirata and move it away and put it somewhere else and build a big harbor there and cruise ships would come in spite of how the, tech, the technical people said that they could not build a, a, a cruise spot there because the, 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 the sea waves, the waves will not, will not allow it. There was a big announcement. Everybody has tried to improve St. Lucia's cruise offerings. Even though they collected $6, $10, they tried. Nobody succeeded. This government went into an agreement with an 
internationally renowned firm to improve the cruise facilities in the country. In response, they paid up Slasper's bill of $20 million that they owed the bank. And they're going to use a, me a method, the PPP method, where the government leases its property and give it back. Just like the House of Justice, we get it back. It doesn't stay. It's not, it's not rented facilities that remain in the hands of the owner or leased premises. We get it back. So here's a situation where there is, that there is redevelopment to improve the competitiveness of St. Lucia's cruise tourism. We would, we would not be competitive because our facilities were not up to date. And governments tried. Governments tried to uplift it, to upgrade it. We tried before. Governments tried. But we've, what we're doing is we say, listen to me, let us upgrade these facilities without one cent of debt to the people of St. Lucia. So you're going to develop your airport, hopefully, if the model had remained, without one cent of debt for the people. Now it's different. Then you're going to, you're going to upgrade your, your seaports. But, but in upgrade that infrastructure, you're not incurring debt. You're not incurring debt. So your debt to GDP ratio is not increasing, but due to the PPP arrangements, you are getting the infrastructure for your country to develop. So that is where, where, where we're going. Something, something we we promise, and we're doing. The other investments are private sector investments. The hotels, private sector. The investment on the Pope site, private sector. The government just creates their, their neighboring environment. But for the infrastructure of the country, the roads, the seaports, the, the, the airports, we want to do it without increasing debt. That is the, 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 that is the economic rationale for going into these PPP arrangements, for us not to incur debt. That's why. And all the arrangements that went through the, the, the cabinet come as uh, statutory instruments. If you go into the Gazette, you will see that the environmental levy actually increases. It was $1, $4.04 EC from 1996. From January 2025, it actually is going to increase to $2.50. The environmental, that's a fact. So contrary to the fact that it's going to, the, the environmental, environmental levy is going to increase to $2.50. What, what the country gets in exchange? The country gets massive exposure. GPH is an international, GPH operates in the Bahamas, in ports in Europe. It's an international firm that is giving us that level of exposure in exchange for a lease on our premises. But they were there all the time. They were on the, the vendors' arcade has been, we wanted, we wanted to rebuild it for a long time. The vendors have been complaining that it's leaking. It's, so what do we do? What we did is we caused it to be rebuilt so the vendors can operate in a better environment, without incurring debt. And that's, that's, that's the rationale. So I want you to understand that. And it, it comes back to us for generations. It comes back to us. After 30 years, it comes back to us. Most of you are going to be alive still. I'll be dead. But it'll come back to you in, in, in 30 years. It's, it's, it'll, it'll be your part. In 30 years, it won't be mine, I'll be dead. So, that's it. So, I'm going to play in the region. How you feel? They won the first game. Talk to me. I know you're a cricket fan. And, I, and, and you, must, you must also, I don't know if you're back in Arsenal, but you all didn't win. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> let's, stay, let's, stay yep. on, let's stay on top. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that. I'm saying that. 
Man, Manchester United won a cup, right? Yeah. No, I just want to, I just want to remind you yeah. that we are the FA champions. Yeah. We have, right. we have some silverware. We're playing in Champions League next year. We're playing in, 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 in nah, Europe. You're, you're in the backyard. In Europe. Let's talk to the West. Let's speak to Darren Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I'll tell you something. Yeah. On Friday, why don't you join me? I'm going to have a look at 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 the Darren Sammy. I want you to join. Come and see. Come and see the development that's happening there. Come and see the infrastructural improvement. Official. The same, the same I must officiate you when I'm out for half a day. No, no, no. All right. Let me give you an official. We'll tell. We'll tell you. The president. Come, come, come and join us. You see, the Prime Minister Barbie has invited the public to look at things. So I want to invite you to come and see. And why should, why should they? I'm taking you to see the improvements on Mindo Philip Park. I think it's improvements that are going to make in Marsha Grounds. And after that, I'm going to show you the improve. And after that, we're going to go improvements in sporting facilities. Not two. Not two facilities. Sporting facilities, generally. I'll take you. You see, I must begin to take you to see things. Yes, yes. I don't know if improvements, as you mentioned, improvements, uh -huh. and keeping to the lighter side. I'm noticing that there's a new addition to your office. Uh, can you introduce us to the new addition and... Uh, What's an addition? It's not an addition. What's an addition? An addition. You are vulnerable when you when you ask. Vulnerable, they will take that. They'll say, Prime Minister, here you don't know what what the meaning of woods. A while ago, you, you said you don't. What's what's the meaning of what? What do you say? You know, just be mindful. Just Fantastic. Be mindful. Yeah, they, they'll always say, Hey, look PJP, you don't know this. Look PJP, be careful. But you know, I just a minute. Thanks. But, but in my business, you must expect that you know yeah. you only shoot up, you know, never shoot down. You have to go. You know, you know, I, you know, I am ready for anything. I ready because you know. Let me tell you what makes me ready. What makes me ready is my sincerity of purpose. I'm not in this business to to for for for, for myself to make myself big to 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 the prime minister said no, no, no. I know where I came from. I'm very pleased. People of St. Lucia, first to the residents of Cassius East, then the Labour Party, and the cabinet of ministers have chosen me as the Prime Minister of St. Lucia. I'm very pleased. I'm humbled. And I will do the job to the best of my ability. The time when the time comes, and the people of St. Lucia say they, 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 they no longer want you, I will step down graciously. I go lead my life. I had a life before. I, I don't have any money. I'll never have. I'll never have money. I'll never get rich in politics. Never. I can tell that for a fact. Right? So I'll go graciously. You see this bitterness and this hatred. I will trust me. When I leave this job, you won't get it from me. You won't get it from me. Because I would have been pleased that the people of St. Lucia have made me the ninth prime minister, ninth prime minister of St. Lucia. So I have no bitterness, I have no hatred, I have no envy. I'm not planning to do, I don't go home at nights and plan to do somebody something, to say something bad about somebody, to put things together to make somebody look bad. The people of St. Lucia will have a choice. They've tried it before, you know. I was the most underestimated political leader in St. Lucia. They say I stammered. They say I come from this and that. They say all kinds of things about me, you know. If you would hear what my opponents say about me, what they continue to say about me, you'd think that St. Lucia has never been worse before. You understand? I mean, so I, I've been there. So nothing, I can assure all my opponents. I don't look at Facebook. I don't see the memes. I don't see TikTok. So all what they say about me, I don't see it. These people tell me, sometimes I tell them, leave me alone. So, <laughs> so I can warn them. I can warn them that, that that is doing me nothing. I don't listen to talk shows. And I don't listen to talk shows. I'm focused. You know what I want to do? I want to win my seat for the sixth time with a bigger majority. That's, that, that's my the seventh time, sorry. That's my focus. <laughs> that, that's all I focus on in politics. 
And so when you see it was before, people do this, do that. No, no, focus. You are only successful politician when you can win your seat. And I tell all political aspirants, try and win a seat. Before you try and be prime minister, before you try and be minister, try and win a seat. You understand? So my focus now is to win for the seventh time with a bigger majority. That's my focus. Soon. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I tell you. That. I take all these things in, in, in good chair. So I mean, these things are dashing of blah, blah. I don't listen to them. I know I know most of them things are not true. Most of them things that people have their own fancy for like this. So I don't even hear them. If I'm not told, I'll never hear. I live in a in a in you see in these kind of things. Focus. I'm focused. I have a redevelopment plan for my constituency. There's a guy in the house in the house where Kalalu used to live, he doesn't want to leave. Now, people say, break it, break it around him, I wouldn't do that. So I will look to get him out because I want to transform that whole place. I want to take up this building and transform the place. I'm doing work on the martial grounds. I'm reviving the Diamond Steel Orchestra. You see, I am doing, on, I'm doing the Bell Bridge Court again. I've done it before it was damaged. I'm redeveloping the market to make it a craft market. That's my focus, not... So I can assure you, you could tell my opponents that that is dashing. I don't hear it. I don't listen. So it's actually a waste of time as far as I'm concerned. If it persuades other people, I don't know. But if you see me, nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I, and I learned that from Sir John. Rick Wayne always told me that John Compton says he doesn't read any newspaper. <laughs> 